properties of angles formed by a transversal. So what we have here is we have this transversal line. So this is our transversal line. A transversal line is a line that crosses two lines that cross that are perpendicular to one another. So these two lines are perpendicular to one, or one another. So the line that crosses through it is known as the transversal. So I'm just going to leave um, that one line there. So what we have here is the following. So let's look at this here, this interior angle right here. And we draw this interior angle. So these two angles, right, these two angles in, in each pair of alternate angles, they are pretty much equal to one another. So if we're going to label this, uh, let's label them with some letters. So if we label this as A, and we label this as angle or as B, A is actually going to equal to B. So really, what you're looking for is the following. I like to think of this Z pattern. So a Z pattern that is formed. So the inside of this Z, or this backward Z, should I say, right, equal one another, which means if we if if we do the same right let's um let's do the same let's find this z pattern here but a real z pattern the inner angles of this z pattern will also equal one another so let's label this as c and let's label this as d so angle c will equal to angle d so what we're looking for are these are considered alternate angles and alternate angles will form this Z shape where this are the perpendicular lines or a backwards Z again which this and this are considered the perpendicular lines and this line here of the Z in both is the transversal now let's look at another property here with uh, the following. So we've got the same thing, but now what we're gonna do is we are going to label this as A and this as B. So what we have here, um, and let me um, let me do another one here. Uh, actually, you know what? Yeah, let's do it this way. Let's do, this is C and this is D. So C, is actually equal to D because these are what we call corresponding corresponding angles and corresponding angles are equal to one another and what we're looking for is this F pattern in which this angle and this angle equal to one another. Now, if we look at the ones that we labeled before, right, with this transversal, we've got an upside down F, right, in which this angle is equal to that angle. So A is equal to angle B because they too are considered corresponding angles. So how do we tell for corresponding angles? Well, look for the F shape. Right? And in this F shape, whether it's F that way or F upside down, or if it's F reverse upside down, or if it's F backwards as such, it's always going to be the angle inside here. Those are the angles that are considered corresponding to one another. Oops. Ignore that one. So let's look at one more property in these transversal lines. And this is the following. If we've got this angle here, and then we've got this angle here, right? This angle here in red, and this angle here in blue, 
if we add these two together, angle this plus angle of this, it will equal to 180 degrees. And as we've said before, anytime we add up to 180 degrees, what we're saying is that they are supplementary. All right? Now, which ones did we use to find supplementary? Well, we use pretty much interior angles. So the interior angles here form 180 degrees. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this shape here, this shape, right? And we form this C, right? And we can do the same thing on this side here, which means if we took this angle and we added it to this angle here, they too will add up to 180 degrees.